In this video we're going to look at the wave functions for the hydrogen atom. So we have our Hamiltonian, which was the kinetic energy of an electron, minus h bar squared over 2 times mass of the electron, uh, del squared, the Laplacian operator, minus the Coulomb force between the electron and a proton fixed at the nucleus, e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r. That's attractive because they're of opposite charge. And that gives us this Schrodinger equation that this Hamiltonian H acting on psi of r theta phi, the spherical polar coordinates, equals the energy E times the same psi of r theta phi. And we looked in the last video at the energy levels, which depend on these constants, mass of the electron, charge of the electron, epsilon naught, Planck's constant, and depend on the inverse square of some quantum number n. So now let's look at what these wave functions are that give these energies. So we're going to have a psi which depends on three quantum numbers, n, l, and m, and sometimes m is also referred to as m sub l, so I'll just go ahead and write it that way. If you see it just as m, that's the same thing. So this function is a function of r, theta, and phi. And we can do another separation of variables type trick to separate it into two parts, one which depends on the radial part. And notice that this depends on the quantum number n and the quantum number l for what this function is as a function of r. And then we're going to have a angular part, which is going to be our spherical harmonics. It's the same wave functions we had from the rigid rotor. So those are functions we're already familiar with, the y of lm of theta and phi. So for a reminder on what the values of those uh, functions are, just look at the video on the wave functions of the rigid rotor. But for now, we'll go ahead and focus on these. So these functions are going to be two parts. One part is going to be called the associated Legere functions which again, just like the associated Legendre functions, are just going to be some polynomial. Um, we saw that in the spherical harmonics we have the Legendre polynomials, or associated Legendre functions, which are uh, functions of cosine theta, and here we're going to have them uh, being functions of, let's see, um, not quite radius, but it's going to be uh, two times radius over quantum number n times the Bohr radius, but we'll get there uh, shortly. And then there's also uh, an exponential, which we'll look at as well. And these YLMs, as we said, those are just the familiar spherical harmonics, which are the wave functions of the harmonic oscillator. Or no, not the harmonic oscillator, the rigid rotor. Okay, so those are rigid rotor wave functions in the spherical harmonics. And these quantum numbers, what values can those take on? Well, for n, l, and m sub l, all possible values of those are all integers. So they're all values which are whole integers, you know, 0, 1, 2, minus 1, minus 2, etc. <clears throat> and then the types of values they can take on is n is going to be greater than or equal to 1. So the minimum value for n is 1, as we see up here. For L, we have z L can be anywhere between 0 and n minus 1. So for n equals 3, L can be 0, 1, or 2. For n equals 4, L can be 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. And lastly, for m sub L, m sub L can be any value between minus L and L. So if L is 0, M sub L can only be 0. If L is 1, then M sub L can be minus 1, 0, and 1, etc. So just like uh, these, these L and M sub L are completely analogous to the uh, J and M from the, from the rigid rotor. They are the same quantum numbers coming from the same place because there is no potential energy which was acting on the angular part. The potential energy is only radial. So essentially what you have is the rigid rotor in, in the angular coordinates in theta and phi, the polar and azimuthal angles. So these R of NL, these radial wave functions, we need to discuss those because those are completely new to us. 
So to look at those. We have R and L, <coughs> which is a function of the spatial coordinate R, the rate, the distance from the origin. That's going to be a normalization constant, which is the square root of n minus 1 minus L, that whole quantity factorial, over 2n, open quantity n plus 1 factorial, and then that quantity cubed. So take care of the order of operations there. Take the factorial first, then cube that. Then there's going to be 2 over n, the quantum number n, this distance a naught, which is going to be the Bohr radius. I'll write down in a second what that is. Plus, and then that to the power of l plus 3 halves. And then we have r to the l, so radius to the power of the quantum number l, e to the minus r over n a naught. So there's our exponential part of that. And then lastly, we have these associated Laguerre functions, which is going to be l of, and then just like the Legendre function, the associated Legendre function, it's going to have two numbers which we give as input to it, which are n plus l and 2l plus 1. And then the variable that gets fit into here, fed into here, so if you look up what these polynomials are, then the value you use that you substitute for x is 2r over n a naught. Okay, so then as I said, a naught is the so-called Bohr radius. And that is equal to 0 0.529 angstroms. And this angstrom, this angstrom here, remember that that is uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 10th meters. So this would be 5.29 times 10 to the minus 11th meters. Okay, so those, those are our uh, variables there, and then just to note that this L A B of X, where A is n plus L, B is 2L plus 1, and our X is 2R over n a naught, <coughs> that was our uh, associated Laguerre functions for a given value of A and B. So what do these wave functions end up being when we substitute in specific values of n and l? So we get our first radial wave function, r10, is going to be 2 times z, which we'll discuss in a second, over the Bohr radius, a0, all to the 3 halves, times e to the minus rho. So let's discuss this rho and z. So rho is just a convenient substitution to avoid writing very small things up in the exponent, and that's just going to be z times r, the radius, over the Bohr radius. The Bohr radius, again, being 0.529 angstroms. But what about this z? So z is just going to be the number of protons in the nucleus. So z is going to be 1 for hydrogen, for the hydrogen atom. Now you might ask why we have z in there, since this is the hydrogen atom wave functions. Well, these are also valid wave functions for any uh, atom in which we have some number of protons in the nucleus and we only have one electron. So these are also perfectly valid wave functions for uh, z equals 2 for helium plus, which is two protons in a nucleus and one electron. Similarly, z would equal 3 for lithium 2 plus. It will equal 4 for beryllium 3 plus. And it gets much and much less plausible that any type of atom like that would exist beyond that. But you can see the trend. It's just a certain number of protons. So it, z is the integer number of how many protons there are in any uh, atom where you have a nucleus and just one electron. So then we can go to n equals 2, l equals 0. And for that one, we'll see z over 2 a naught, again to the 3 halves, times the polynomial 2 minus rho 
times e to the minus rho over 2. So you see a faster decaying exponent, and you also see a 2 minus rho here. So there's going to be a point at where this function equals 0 before infinity. It's going to go down, cross 0, and come back. And that's going to give us what we call a radial node. But we'll discuss that more later. And for n equals 2, we can see that we can have l equals 0, and it can also equal 1. It can go up to n, uh, n minus 1. So we can have r of 2, 1, and that value would be 1 over square root of 3 times z over 2 a naught to the 3 halves, rho e to the minus rho over 2. Okay, so there's a different polynomial in there, and this time we do not have a radial node. If you go up to n equals 3, there are three possible values of what you can have for L. You can have it equal 0, 1, or 2. So there will be three possible radial wave functions when we go up to uh, n equals 3. And I'll try to write these as quickly as we can here. Not like that. 2 over 27, we see the factor of z over 3 a naught to the 3 halves. Then a quadratic polynomial in row, 27 minus 18 rho plus rho squared e to the minus rho over 3. So you see the exponential decay getting even faster, this polynomial getting bigger as we go up. As you see these Ligari polynomials get bigger, this exponent gets faster decaying. 3, 1, we have 1 over 27, 2z over 3a naught to the 3 halves rho times 6 minus rho, same thing as 6 rho minus rho squared, whichever you prefer, e to the minus rho over 3, and lastly r3 2 is going to be 4 over 27 root 10 z over 3a naught to the 3 halves rho squared e to the minus rho over 3. So you see at, at uh, n equals 1, we have a, our polynomial in rho is just 1. At n equals 2, we have some linear polynomial in rho. At n equals 3, we have some quadratic polynomial in rho. And the exponent is getting faster and faster decaying as n goes up. And then this normalization constant just tags along to do whatever it needs to do to make sure that integrating from r equals 0 to infinity of psi star psi or r star r of the radial part is going to give us 1. So um, as we're going to see later that this is going to be the radial part for the 1s orbital for n equals 1, l equals 0. Um, this is going to be the 2s. This will be the radial part for our 2p. And then you'll have similarly 3s, 3p, and 3d. So if you're familiar with those terms from general chemistry, that's uh, why I wrote these out to show you kind of these are the radial parts to the different atomic orbitals that you have heard of before. And this is them in their full uh, glorious mathematical detail. We're going to look at these later in plots and get a bigger idea for what they mean. But this is the full mathematical detail of what the radial part of these atomic orbitals looks like. And by now you can get the kind of general trends that you'd see as you go up higher and higher in N and in L.